Welcome to this presentation on the handheld acoustic Doppler, which is part of a series of presentations and videos on free flap care for nursing and staff. In this presentation, we will review post-op monitoring of free flaps with a handheld acoustic Doppler. In free flap surgery, in order to keep flap tissue alive, we reconnect it to new blood vessels at the recipient site with an operating microscope. After surgery, a handheld acoustic Doppler allows us to evaluate the blood flow to the flap so we can monitor for problems with flap perfusion. With the handheld Doppler, we are checking the smaller perforator blood vessels that give blood supply to the flap skin. These are much more superficial than the main blood vessel pedicle we connected with the surgical microscope. The location of this perforator where the best Doppler signal or pulse can be found is marked during surgery with a blue suture so it can easily be located for monitoring after surgery. This blue suture marks the area where you should use the handheld acoustic Doppler to perform your Doppler checks. So how exactly do Dopplers work? Handheld acoustic Dopplers work by emitting sound waves via a probe that travel through tissue, are reflected off moving red blood cells in the target blood vessel, then are detected by the Doppler probe giving us audible information about blood flow to the flap. Now you're ready for a Doppler check. For a free flap Doppler check, you're going to need a handheld acoustic Doppler and some ultrasound transmission gel. Before you start, it's important to make sure you use the correct Doppler. There are a variety of different Dopplers available in the hospital with different frequencies that are used for different purposes. The higher Doppler frequency, the more shallow the depth of penetration. The lower the Doppler frequency, the deeper the depth of penetration. Using the wrong Doppler could cause inaccurate information, a false sense of security, and frustration. For free flap monitoring, you will want to use an 8 MHz Doppler, whereas a 2 MHz Doppler will penetrate too deep, missing the perforator vessels we're trying to monitor. The 8 MHz Doppler used for flap checks may be found in both wide beam and narrow beam models. Wide beam Doppler probes make it easier and faster to find the Doppler signal. Wide beam Doppler probes have a broad head with a rectangular tip, whereas narrow beam Dopplers have a more narrow circular tip. It's important to use ultrasound transmission gel to ensure you get a good signal when performing Doppler checks. To do this, apply a small amount of ultrasound transmission gel to the location of the perforator marked by the blue suture before using the Doppler. Next, make sure the volume on the upper left side of the Doppler is turned up, then press the gray power button to turn the Doppler on. Hold the Doppler box in one hand and the Doppler probe in the other dominant hand. Apply the Doppler probe to the area of the blue suture to search for the Doppler signal. You may have to move the probe around the area of the blue suture in order to find the Doppler signal. In this video, you can hear the pulsatile sound of the flat perforator artery through the Doppler. In this video, you can hear the pulsatile sound of the artery, but if you listen in the background, between the pulsatile beats of the artery, you can also hear the constant sound of nearby vein blood flow. You may not always be able to hear the vein signal, but you should be able to hear the pulsatile artery signal. If you cannot initially find a signal with the Doppler, you may need to adjust the angle of your probe or search in the area around the blue suture. External pressure or positioning causing pressure to the flap may obstruct blood flow to the flap, making it difficult to find a Doppler signal. If you're having trouble finding a Doppler signal, you should ensure no pressure is being applied to the flap 
and you may want to reposition the patient to better find a Doppler signal. If you cannot find a Doppler signal despite these maneuvers, this could indicate a problem with blood flow to the flap, which could require urgent attention, so you should contact your surgeon. Doppler checks are usually performed more frequently initially after surgery when the flap is at greater risk for problems with blood flow, then decrease in frequency over time. Thank you for watching this presentation on the use of the handheld Doppler for free flap monitoring. Please stay tuned and follow for more presentations and videos on free flap monitoring and care after surgery.